Okay, today we're going to go over an intro to slope. So I want you to read along your notes because this is how you find the slope of a line on a graph. So finding the slope of a line, the steepness of a line is the ratio of rise to run or the vertical change to the horizontal change for the step. We call this ratio the slope of a line. Slope is also known as the rate of change. To determine the slope of the line, you need to consider the directions or sign of the vertical and horizontal change from one point to the other. So the word rate is really, really important. It needs to be underlined because that's what you're calculating. You're calculating the rate of change. Okay, the slope is the vertical change over the horizontal change. So there's also a formula for slope, and then that is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And those subscripts just tell you what coordinate you're looking at. So you are going to take two, two coordinates and subtract them from one another. That's how you calculate the slope. Okay, so example one shows the line with a positive slope. So this is positive, so we're just looking at how steep this is. So if you look, and we had to calculate this, you can count on a graph. So if you look at the line, you have two dots, okay? All you're doing is counting the change. So you're going to see, how do I get from the first dot going left to right? You're looking at the first dot, and you're always looking at your graph from left to right. Okay, so you're trying to see how do I get from this point to this point. I have to travel. So you're traveling, you're going up one, two, so up two, and then you're going over one, two, three. So the change in y, your up or down, is going by 2. So your change in y, and that triangle right there stands for change. So that means change. So your change in y is that you're moving up 2, so that would be 2. And then your change in x is going to be 3. Okay? And this is how much you're going up or rising. So that's if you're going up. It's also if you're going down. And then run. That means if you're going right or left. So if you go back and look at your graph right here, this whole rise over run is that you are putting the change going up on the y at axis and then over on the x axis. And it's always going to be the y over the x. So right now that slope, how steep that is, is two thirds. Okay, so that's how steep that is. Because every single time that line is going up, up two over three, up two over three. That's how that line's going. Okay, so it's the change in y over the change in x. And you're going to use that to calculate the slope because we were trying to figure out how steep the line is in A and how steep the line is in B. So you guys can pick any two points. It does not matter. So if I'm looking at this line right here, I could pick these two points that are red. So I could pick those two points, or I could pick another two points. I can pick any two points just as long as they are perfectly on a coordinate. Okay, They can't be in between. So all you're going to do is you're going to pick two points, and you're going to see, you're going to count and see how much are, are they going up each time and over each time. So it looks like from this point to this point, you're going up one, two, three, and then over one. And then you check again. 
So look at the graph. You're going to check again. You're going to see, do I keep going up 1, 2, 3, and over 1? Do I land on my line? 1, 2, 3, over 1. Do I land on my line again? Yes. So the change in Y, so the change in Y is you're going up 3 and over 1. So the slope of this line is just going to be 3 over 1, which 3 over 1 is 3. All right, for example B, you have to find where the line intersects perfectly to put your points on your slope, okay? So you're going to count, all right, you're going to look down the line and say, okay, where does my line intersect perfectly with the point? At this point, again, at this point. So each time you're going to go up one, over two. Up one, over two. Up one, over two. Up one, over two. So it's constant. It does not change every time. It does not change. Okay? So you're going to go up one and then right two. So that's your change in your y over your change in your x. So your slope is going to be one half. That's what the slope equals. Okay, so here are examples with lines with negative slopes. That means from left to right. And you need to write this on your graph. From left to right. That's how you read a graph. So you're reading it by starting up here and then you're reading it going this way or across. Okay? So from left to right your graph goes down. So that means that your slope is negative. Because it's going down. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing that we did for the first examples that were positive, but instead of counting up, we're counting down now. So you're going to look at your line. So for A, you'll pick points, you'll travel down your line and you'll pick points that intersect with the grid perfectly. So pick this point right here and then I'll keep traveling down. I'll pick this point, keep traveling down your line, pick that point, and then you're going to count. So each time you're not going up, you're going down. So you'll count one, two, three, and then over one. So it's down three, over one. Down three, over one. Down three, over one. Down three, over one. So if you're going to go down three, down means negative. So you would put negative three. And then you're going right one. So your slope is going to be negative, and it's going to be negative three. Okay, for example B, you're supposed to find what is the rate of change of the car speed from 10 to 15 seconds. So you're only looking at the X from 10 to 15 seconds. So you're only looking at this piece of your graph. And you have to calculate the slope. So you're only calculating that line. So you're going to look at that line and you're just going to see where it intersects perfectly. So it looks like it's going down, down one, okay because you can't see perfectly, you can't see where it intersects and it's not perfect you can just do calculate the change in y which it looks like it's about at up here this looks like it's at 45 so you would do 45 and since it's going down you're gonna put negative 45 and then the change in x well if you look at this the change the change is how many X's you have. So from 10 to 15, there's five. So you have five units. So you'll put five, that's your change. 
and the change in y is that it goes from 45 up here to 0 in that time period. So that's why it's negative 45, because you're going from 45 and decreasing in that time period. So your slope for this, if you divided it, would just be negative 9. Okay, this is the rate. The rate is that the car's speed goes down by 9 miles per hour, okay, per second. So that's the negative 9 is miles per hour in your graph. All right, let's look at these special slopes that we were talking about earlier, okay? Special slopes. Okay, zero slope, if the line is horizontal, okay, we talked about that, if the line is horizontal, you have no slope. If you are skiing on something that's a horizontal line, right, you have no slope. Okay, if your slope is vertical, then it's undefined. If your slope is horizontal, then it equals zero. Okay, vertical, undefined. Horizontal equals zero. So you have to keep that in mind. If you see lines that are straight up and down and they go vertically, that's undefined. If you see lines that are horizontal, then that's a zero slope. All right, now we're going to calculate the slope using a table. Okay, so you need to write down the slope formula. So if you have a table, you're going to use the slope formula, okay, to calculate the slope. Okay, do you guys see the change in Y? And this is the change in X at the bottom. These represent two points. So you're going to have x, y, and that's going to be one coordinate. And then the second coordinate is going to be an x, y. So that's just x1, y1, x2, y2. <clears throat> so for example four, you have the change in y over the change in x. Okay, you can do this two different ways. You can just look at the change between 2 to 4. That's plus 2, right? And then you can look at the, the change in x, and that's plus 3. And then you can just write the change in y, okay, was 2, and the change in x was 3. So that can give you your slope. Or you can calculate it by plugging those two in. So your coordinates for each of these, your first coordinate would be 2, 2, and your second coordinate would be 5, 4. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to plug this in. So this is x, y, and this is x, y. So this one is your first coordinate, so you would put x, 1, and then y1. The next one would be x2 and y2. Okay, so I'm going to take this, now that I have my I have my coordinates for the first set and then I have my coordinates for the second set, I'm going to just plug it into this equation. Okay, I'm going to plug it in and set it up just like that. So <clears throat> I would write y2, which is 4, so 4 minus y1 which is 2, and then 5 minus 2, and that's going to give me 2 over 3. So that just proved that the slope was correct. So I did it first by just looking at the changes in the x, and then I did it again by actually calculating the slope out. And when I plugged it into the slope formula, I got 2 thirds for both. Okay, guys, this, we're going to look at the change. First, we're going to look at it from the change standpoint. Like, you're going to look at the change in Y over the change in X. And we're just looking at the table. 
Okay, we're just going across and looking. Okay, each time I go from negative 10 to 7. So that is a difference of 3. Okay? And then from negative 7 to 4, that's a difference of 3. So each time my graph for y is increasing by 3. So you would put 3 as my change. Then you would look across and you'd look at the x. Each time you have to figure out what x is doing. Negative 6 to negative 4, it looks like it's changing by 2. And then the next one from negative 4 to negative 2, that's plus 2. Negative 2 plus 2 equals 0. So that's a change of 2 for x. <clears throat> that's how you look at it by just looking at your x values in your graph and then your y values in your graph. <clears throat> when you calculate the slope, you're only using two coordinates, right? So you can pick any two coordinates on this graph. I mean, not the graph, sorry. Any two coordinates on the table. So I'm going to pick... I'm going to pick the 2, 2 coordinates and the 4, 5 coordinates. So 2, 2 and 4, 5 are my coordinates that I'm going to plug into the slope formula. So I have y2 minus y1 and then x2 minus x1. So my slope is two-thirds. So for B, X is always time, and then the Y is the charge. Each time it increases by five for the Y, so the change in Y is five, and then we have to figure out the change in X. If you look each time, the time changes by plus five as well. So the slope for this is five over five, which is one. That just means that it's $1 charge extra per minute. So you're going to put $1 charge per minute. Because when there's words, and they're talking about time, and they're talking about money, and they're talking about charges, when there's words in it, you have to put words in your answer as well. You can't just put <clears throat> the slope is 1 because that's meaningless. They want to know what that actually means, and the rate is a dollar charge per minute. Okay, so for C, you're looking at this table, okay? The table each time is increasing for the X by 2, increasing by 2, increasing by 2. For the Y, <coughs> it's you're adding 4, adding 4, adding 4. So the change in Y is 4 and the change in X is 2. So your slope is 2. And you don't need to put any words here because all they give you is a number numbers in a table. So that's your slope. Alright, we're going to do some negative slopes from a table. So you're just looking across at the X's and you're trying to see the difference between the X is from left to right, okay? So each time, for example, 5, the X's are, are decreasing, right? I'm sorry, for the Y is decreasing. The Y is decreasing by 2. And the X is increasing by 3. So the change in Y over the change in X the change in y is decreasing by 2 each time, so you put negative 2. And the change in x is increasing by 3 each time, so you put 3. Okay, so for a, you're looking at all of the x's and seeing if they increase or decrease each time. So for x, you can look at these and they're increasing by 1 throughout the whole table. So you're going to put 1 for x, the change in x. And then you're going to look at the y values. 
and they are decreasing, but they are decreasing by 0.5 each time. So each of them is decreasing by 0.5. So we're going to put negative 0.5, which that just means that our slope, if you divided negative 0.5 divided by 1, it would just be negative 0.5 or negative 1 half. The table for B, so each time, if you look at the X's, they are increasing by 5. So you'll do the change in Y over the change in X, and these are increasing by 5. But then if you look over here to the Y table, they are decreasing by 10. Each time, they keep decreasing by 10, so your change in Y would be negative 10. So your slope, negative 10 divided by 5, is negative 2. That would be what your slope is. Okay, so example 6, we're going to find the slope of each line that passes through each pair of the points. So <clears throat> when they give you two points, you are always going to just plug those in to the slope equation. And you have to have the slope equation or slope formula memorized. So you're going to plug these two points in and calculate the slope. <clears throat> you're going to go based on order. So if 3 and 5 come first, then 3 and 5 is, that's your x1 and y1, and negative 2 and 10 are your x2 and y2. So you're just going to plug those into the formula. So you have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The only thing that you have to be really careful of is like when you have negatives and you're subtracting a negative. Like, if you already have something that's negative and you subtract from it, that's just going to make it more negative. So that's going to be negative 5. And then 10 minus 5 is just going to give you 5. So your slope here would be negative 1. And that's how you calculate that. Okay, so you guys are going to try A B, C, and D on your own, okay? And then you need to study all of these graphs, okay? So you're going to go over all of these. You're going to go over and make sure that you know the slope of the line is the change in Y over the change in X. If you're looking at a table... You also know how, need to know how to plug two points into the slope formula to figure out the slope. And then you need to know what represents a positive slope. If you're looking at the graph from left to right, it's positive. If you're, looking at the, you're still looking at the graph from left to right, this is negative. If it has no slope, or a horizontal line that's zero slope and then if it's a vertical line then that's undefined slope. 